Hi there. It's getting close to St. Patrick's Day once again, and that means it's time to celebrate with one of the most American holiday dishes we can make, corned beef and cabbage. Oh, yes, I did say American, because uh, it's well known that corned beef and cabbage as a holiday dish originated in New York City, uh, not in Ireland, and that was when the Irish community of uh, New York City borrowed the recipe for corned beef from their Jewish neighbors because beef was uh, cheaper than pork, which is the most commonly consumed meat in Ireland. And thus the tradition of corned beef and cabbage was born on St. Patrick's Day. If you go to Ireland, you'll be hard pressed to find any establishment serving corned beef on St. Patrick's Day. In fact, you'll be more likely to be seeing called cannon as the traditional dish. But frankly, any excuse to have corned beef and cabbage every year is a good excuse because this is a delicious dish, especially when you make it yourself. For anyone who has never made their own homemade corned beef, um, I can only give a word of advice. Do it! It is easy to make, really no more than just as easy as brining your Thanksgiving turkey. In fact, it's even easier because uh, a corned beef brisket isn't as big as a turkey and you can brine it in the back of your refrigerator. And while store-bought corned beef is good, homemade corned beef far, far surpasses it. And once you've made it yourself, you will never again be satisfied with the uh, stuff that you buy at the store. The ingredients used for making corned beef can vary from one recipe to another, and they're not hard to find or very expensive. For some of them, you might have to look at an ethnic supermarket place selling Oriental or Hispanic food rather than your local supermarket, and this is a good thing to do because you can always find something interesting at a foreign market. And a word about nitrates. Saltpeter is traditionally included in the preparation of corned beef as a preservative. Uh, this dish was developed long before the invention of refrigeration, and this is why preservatives like saltpeter were needed when the beef was brined for days at a time. If you choose not to use nitrates such as saltpeter or curing salt, the beef will take a gray color rather than pink. However, it will taste just fine. Many local markets these days sell gray corned beef prepared without nitrates. If you want to follow a tradition and add saltpeter to the brine, you'll find saltpeter is difficult to carry in many locations. Large pharmacy chains such as CVS or Rite Aid don't carry it because of possible legal liability issues. <laughs> saltpeter or curing salt can be ordered online without difficulty, and it is legal to do so. Be sure you're using saltpeter or a curing salt. The package doesn't have to say pink curing salt, but it must say curing. There's a fancy Himalayan pink salt sold at uh, TJ Maxx and natural food stores, but that's just a fancy table salt, and it's not curing salt. And after talking far too much, let's start preparing some corned beef. The spices seen here are a little different from the pickling spices sold for corned beef, but they add a lot of flavor to the meat, and I hope you like it. Next, we add the spices to a cast iron skillet over low to medium heat and gently toast them to really bring out the flavor. This only takes a few minutes and the aroma of the toasting spices is something you won't want to miss. When the spices begin to snap, crackle, and pop, they're ready to be used. Set about one-third of the spices aside and store them in the refrigerator. We'll be using these to cook the corned beef after it's been brined for two weeks.
We prepare the brine by heating up about a gallon of water. We then mix in two cups of kosher salt, half a cup of brown sugar, four teaspoons of saltpeter, and the rest of our spices. We bring it all to a boil, then we wait for the brine to cool down to room temperature. And now to bring out the brisket. This is a 15 pound brisket, but I use this to prepare three separate servings of corned beef. For this recipe, we're using a five pound hunk of brisket. We place the brisket into a two gallon plastic bag and add the brine. To this, we add some ice cubes to help keep it cool and place it in a big bowl in case something happens and the bag leaks. And into the refrigerator it goes to brine for two weeks. And now, a confession. Most recipes for homemade corned beef say to turn the brining bag over every day. I never do that. <laughs> I just leave it in the back of the refrigerator and forget about it for two weeks. Uh, and it still turns out just fine. There isn't one side of the meat that is more brined than the other, and the pink color permeates the entire meat. Two weeks later, it's time to begin cooking. We preheat the oven to 250 degrees, and then we bring out the cast iron. We need a big cooking pot to cook this much corned beef and cabbage, and that's one reason why we're using a cast iron Dutch oven rather than a crock pot. From here, the preparations are easy. All we do is slice up red potatoes, celery, carrots, and a large onion, and mix them together in the pot. And now that the vegetables are ready, we can bring out the brisket. We rinse off the brisket and place it in the cast iron pot on top of the vegetables. Pour the beer over the brisket, then top the brisket with a coating of kosher salt, black pepper, and two bay leaves. Finally, add our spices. And we place it into the oven to slow cook for eight hours. After six and a half hours of cooking, it's time to prepare the cabbage. We waited this long because we still want the cabbage to have some bite to it and not just turn into mush. All we do is remove the heart from the cabbage and cut it up. Now we can take out the cast iron pot and get a sneak peek at our corned beef. <laughs> oh boy. We add the cabbage to the pot, cover it up, and place it back into the oven for another hour and a half.
Once you brine your own corned beef brisket, you'll never again be satisfied with corned beef purchased from the store. However, I'll gladly be honest and agree that there is nothing really wrong with making store-bought corned beef brisket. <laughs> One reason why corned beef is such a popular dish is because it tastes so good, of course, along with being so easy to make. Um, it's only that homemade corned beef brisket is so much better. <laughs> But if you want to kick your store-bought corned beef uh, brisket up a notch, here's a suggestion. Don't be satisfied with that microscopic spice packet that uh, comes with the uh, brisket from the store. Uh, add your own spices and uh, cater it to your own taste, and that will really kick it up a notch and uh, give your family a St. Patrick's feast they won't soon forget. Uh, be, sure to, be sure to slow cook it rather than boiling it. Uh, in the traditional manner because that really brings out the flavor and takes it all up to a level that um, will have you coming back to this dish year after year. Thank you for watching.